Hello, friends. I pray that you are experiencing God's grace today as you go through this day. Uh, he will be faithful and you will recall his love in the morning and recall his faithfulness at night. Uh, yesterday, I had the opportunity to have a Zoom meeting with uh, area pastors, men that I typically pray with every week. On Wednesdays, we, we meet to pray together. Uh, about 10 guys gather for that. We did that by Zoom meeting since we haven't met for a while. It was just so encouraging to hear um, ways that God was being faithful to those men and also to their churches and just to hear gospel stories of the expansion uh, uh, of the gospel into homes that usually don't even hear. Uh, so it was very encouraging to see how God was being faithful to those churches, to those men, and uh, just for opportunities that this unique time is giving us. Um, so it was, it was an encouraging time. Uh, the psalm I want to read uh, for us this morning is Psalm 95, and it, I think it's a very instructive ta uh, psalm for us uh, as we look at uh, this psalm this morning and as we consider the truths in it. Psalm 95 says the whole, this, and I'm going to read the entire psalm. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his, are his also. The sea is his, for he made it. and His hands formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the sheep of his hand. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts, as at Meribah and as on the day at Massa in the wilderness, when your fathers put me to the test and put me to the proof that they had seen my work. For 40 years I loathed that generation and said, they are a people who go astray in their heart and have not known my ways. Therefore I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Uh, this Psalm starts the way many Psalms do. It starts with a call of praise and, and we hear that call. Let us sing to the Lord, make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into this presence when thanksgiving and make a joyful noise with a song of praise. So there's this call, but then there's reasons for the call in verses really three through seven. And those reasons are around God's sovereignty uh, and his greatness, that he is sovereign over all creation um, and all creation. He's above all gods. He's sovereign over the earth, the dry land, um, the, the seas. But not just that he's sovereign and great, but he's also gracious, that he had saved his people. And so not only is there a call to praise, there's reasons given for that praise. But then at the end of verse 7 and going into verse 8, the psalm takes a pretty big change, pretty big turn. And it says this, For he is our God, we have this decoration, and we are the people of his pasture, the sheep of his hand. And then we have the turn, the second half of verse 7. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as at Meribah and as on the day at Massa in the wilderness. And what this is recalling it's really recalling the children of Israel, um, not just struggling with what they were going through, but actually starting to grumble, complain, and then accuse. And they actually accuse God. They accuse him of his character, that he's not the God he said he was. Uh, so they accuse it, uh, his integrity. They say he's not the powerful God. He can't actually deliver on promises. So this grumbling uh, is more than just struggling. And remember the Psalms lament. The Psalms are very honest with people struggle and are asking questions about uh, about God being just and and knowing that God's just but but why then the wicked prosper and and so the Psalms are very honest but this is beyond that this is people who grumble complain and then accuse God and they accuse him about a lack of goodness a lack of power a lack of faithfulness and it's very serious and then at mass of the people test God uh, you have to do something to prove who you are to us and it's very serious. Now, what we have to remember is these people had already experienced much. Um, they had experienced God's deliverance from Egypt, uh, God's deliverance at the Red Sea. Uh, they had experienced God's glory and the giving of his law at Mount Sinai and his provision for them. So these were people that had experienced a lot of God, but now they were complaining, grumbling, and accusing, and really were in hardened unbelief and we're testing God 
uh, that God would have to prove himself to them, uh, even though they had experienced all that. And I think what it shows us is they forgot. Uh, they forgot. They were ruled by their current circumstances, and they forgot God for who God was and all that God had done for them. And that's what we want to guard ourselves from. We don't want to interpret God just through the lens of the current. Um, we want to interpret God through all of life. How has God been great and gracious to us? Um, and as we do that, uh, as we recall his greatness and his graciousness, it will build our faith and will protect us from the mistake this generation made. They grumbled, they complained, and they asked for proof. We don't want to do that. Um, so we want to do what I mentioned the other day. We want to start each day recalling God's love for us, his great steadfast love. And we want to go to bed each night remembering the grace that God gave us for that day and the faithfulness he gave us for that day. So let's, let's always go into the day recalling God's steadfast love. And let's end the day remembering uh, his steadfast faithfulness to us so that we don't fall into grumbling and testing of the Lord. So let's pray. God, thank you so much for your grace to us each day. Your mercies are new each morning, and we need them each morning. Uh, Lord, thank you for how you are working. Thank you that you are the God who's sovereign over all things. Uh, but Lord, you're also the God that saves, and you have saved us, and I thank you for that. Lord, please bless our day today. Help us to follow you with faithfulness today. Uh, Lord, help us to learn from this scripture today. Uh, that we would be faithful followers and not complainers and grumblers and testers. I pray this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and have a great day.